thank you for joining us today. It's been an incredibly difficult and tragic 38 hours. The weight of Constables Travis Jordan and Brett Ryan's deaths still hasn't completely sunk in, nor will it ever truly sink in. <clears throat> Before I provide you an update on the investigation, I'd like to take a moment to reflect on the unfathomable loss facing the families of Constables Jordan and Ryan. Their grief is our grief. We ask that you continue to hold them in your thoughts and respect their space. They are EPS family and we are working to support them through what have undoubtedly been some of their most heartbreaking days. I'd also like to thank you, the media and the public, for being patient with us as we navigate this loss. The outpouring of support has not gone unnoticed. Across the city, the country, across the whole world, you give us strength. Though, as Chief McPhee emphasized yesterday, there is no further risk to the community, we understand that yesterday's events have deep and far-reaching effects on the citizens of Edmonton. We are still very much in the early stages of our investigation, but here is what I can share with you now. At approximately 12.26 a.m. on Thursday, March 16th, Constable Travis Jordan and Constable Brett Ryan responded to a family dispute call on an apartment complex near 114th Avenue and 132th Street. When the two officers arrived, they were met by a 55-year-old female complainant outside of the building. The two officers then responded to the suite where she lived, along with her 73-year-old male partner and her 16-year-old son. Immediately upon arriving outside the suite, both constables were shot multiple times by the 16-year-old male and were immediately incapacitated. A struggle reportedly ensued between the mother and son over the firearm, and the mother was shot. The suspect then turned the firearm on himself, taking his own life. The father from the residence was not physically injured during the shootings. It has since been confirmed that neither officer discharged their firearm, and it is apparent that they had no opportunity to, opportunity to respond to the threat that faced them. There was no prior information or knowledge about the existence of a gun, and details surrounding that firearm are being investigated. Following 911 calls by multiple reporters, additional police and EMS arrived. One of the injured officers was transported to a, in a police vehicle to hospital, while the other injured officer was taken by ambulance. The female complainant was also taken by ambulance to hospital, where she remains in serious but stable condition. Soon after arriving at the hospital, both officers were declared deceased. As the 16-year-old suspect died in the presence of police, the Director of Law Enforcement was notified and directed that Alberta's Serious Incident Response Team, ACERT, provide oversight to the investigation being conducted by the EPS Homicide Section. We welcome this role from ACERT and we will continue to do everything we can to ensure a quality and transparent investigation is completed. Autopsies for both officers will be conducted this weekend. The autopsy for the youth suspect is scheduled for Wednesday next week. In times like these, putting on the uniform is no easy task. The reminders of constables Jordan and Ryan are everywhere, but our members have an unwavering sense of duty and dedication to Edmontonians and the safety of our city. They mourn, but they serve without hesitation. In their every action, they honor the unthinkable sacrifice that's been made. To all those involved in yesterday's events, from the paramedics to hospital staff and countless other agencies and first responders who have provided support, thank you. We are incredibly grateful for all you have done. Once again, we'll do our best to keep everyone updated as the investigation progresses. Information on the public portion of funeral arrangements will be released as soon as it is available.